Our UNI Panthers men's basketball team was as cool as the other side of the pillow this weekend as they won their fourth MVC title, their first since 2010. Welcome to the Prowl. This is The Prowl. Welcome to The Prowl. I'm Ian Shohanek. And I'm Andy McConnell. As the indoor season is winding down, let's take an in-depth de look at the UNI's women's track and field team as they compete in the Missouri Valley Conference Championships. <laughs> been really happy with the women this indoor season. They, um, from the very beginning, even in the fall, they just had a terrific mindset. They made up their mind they want to be good, and they, they, they become a very close team, very supportive of each other, um, and the results were obvious right away. Yeah. As soon as we started the indoor season, they started breaking records. Every kid is hitting big, big PRs, and you could just see, okay, this is a special group. Uh, and uh, they just started feeding off each other's positive energy and the momentum just kept building and, and, and now shoot, they broke a bunch of records um, and I think they're poised to have a really, really good meet this weekend. Um, I think heading into the outdoor season, typically if you're good indoors, you can be good outdoors. And then we have some uh, javelin throwers that don't get to compete indoors, they'll get to compete outdoors and they're very talented and hungry. So I think this is, is really gonna be a terrific indoor and outdoor season and we're going to look back on 2015 it's, it's really one of the best uh, seasons the women have had in a very long time just a special group of kids so this year i just uh, brought some experience to the team i tried to be a resource for my teammates um, just being out it helped me uh, not only get a perspective on everything but also just to kind of be there for everyone and help coach a little bit here and there since i have a lot of experience so that's kind of what i brought being injured this year chaley rath has, has really stepped up her game this year she's a sophomore and um, she's having a great meet so far, has a couple PRs on the day, um, and she'll be, she's the favorite now in the high jump, which will be tomorrow. Uh, Rachel Pate, she's also doing great, um, and our freshman, uh, Lauren Frederick, she's on PR pay. So, um, so far, so good. Everybody looks like they, they've got their minds right, and, um, and I'm excited. I, I'm going to enjoy watching them. Thanks, Tommy, for that look at our women's track team. Next, Drew Hayes brings us a look at UNI's fourth annual dance marathon. Dance marathon is a 12-hour event where participants dance and play games for all 12 hours and are not able to sit until midnight. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the day. Oh, yeah. 
as a fan of NCAA basketball, I've obviously followed you and I's basketball team for many years, especially this year. And if that team proves one thing, it's that you and I should never be counted out. But really, that case has been made before. It's been made by Dance Marathon, when you guys set the first year fundraising record for CMN Hospital's Dance Marathon four years ago. And you've continued that pace, benchmarking yourself against the biggest schools in the country, making waves throughout the Dance Marathon community, and making the entire nation look here to Cedar Falls for inspiration and for what's coming next for Dance Marathon. Wow, that event sure looks fun. Dance Marathon helped raise $278,135.04 for the kids at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. That's a lot of money for a good cause. Now, let's turn to Antoine, Anton Ryder, who will be interviewing a special guest. Hey everyone, I'm Anton Ryder, and uh, I'm here with Eric Braley, the owner of Around the Corner Productions, who has been doing, been doing a ton of coverage on the UNI's ben, men's basketball team. Uh, how great is it to have a top 10 team here at UNI? So when you say top 10, that's top 10 in the nation. In the nation, all the, schools. Division one, over 360 boom. schools. It's never been done here before at UNI. It's awesome anytime that we win the conference. It's awesome anytime we're ranked in the top 25 nationally. And it's awesome anytime you make the NCAA tournament. The University of Iowa, the Hawkeyes, they have not been very successful in men's basketball making the tournament the last decade. The Panthers have been, and it's awesome for our university and for our community. And especially, so I'm an alum of UNI, undergraduate e-media in 03 and uh, Masters 05. It's really fun to see students that graduated around my time, how they've always cheered for you and I, but they seem to get connected a little bit more when there's a, a great team like this to cheer for. Yeah. And I know that there's all these game watch parties across the globe where people are getting together in San Francisco or New York City or Chicago. Mm -hmm to watch and cheer on you and I. And that's big for fundraising for the university, oh, yeah. and it's big for fan support as well. Yeah, absolutely, getting a ton of uh, national coverage, even from this small town. Uh, we have ESPN here today interviewing people. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. And uh, Ben Jacobson, Coach of the Year, you know. Uh, just how, how are you, as a media person, how are you covering all of that? and? Uh, basically making us look as good as we are. I, I don't want to complain about being busy, but it's a busy <laughs> time because just today, a uh, request from CBS, they're putting together a special show featuring you and I and some of the top teams that are gonna be in the NCAA tournament. So they're asking for footage that we've collected over the past year. ESPN's contacted us, they're on campus today asking for footage. Sports Illustrated, we're on the cover this week, pretty yeah. big deal. But then also our weekly TV show, Panther Sports Talk, which airs across the state of Iowa. And that's not just men's basketball. Uh, we have a lot on them, especially this year with their success. Mm -hmm. But Panther Sports Talk's a big show, and then First time ever, this new UNI men's basketball all access documentary behind the scenes, almost a reality show. Yeah. And we have had a lot of fun doing that. We got a GoPro mounted in the locker rooms. We got Coach Jacobson mic'd up wearing a lavalier during every game. Mm -hmm. And we're giving fans a chance to see what's talked about in the huddle, what happens preparing for a game, or even when they're playing video games or out for lunch and other things. So right. a lot going on, and we're trying to get more fans to to jump on the Panther bandwagon this year. Oh, I think it's working. I think that uh, the coverage you're doing is excellent. Thank you. Um, 
when I think I think of back to 2010 mm -hmm. when we beat uh, when we beat Kansas. I think it was 2010. Yep. Um, and how that was for ever the big thing at you and I, you know, we beat, it was a huge upset. And I think this is just going to overpower that tenfold. Um, what do you think about that? I completely agree. You look back at Drake, they had one special year in the last about 25 years where they won the conference and they made it to the NCAA tournament. That was great. That was one year. Yeah. Well, we have consistently finished in the top three of the Missouri Valley Conference every single year and getting that national exposure. Okay, you remember us four years ago when we beat the number one overall seed? Ali Farouk Manesh hit that shot. Well, guess what, we're back and we're stronger even this year because yeah. we weren't ranked in the top 10 ranking. We aren't gonna get, uh, we're gonna get a much better seed this year than what we got back then. So I liked it back in 2010, we kind of flew under the radar and surprised people. Yeah. Now expectations are out there because of all that national media exposure. Right, absolutely. Um, how far do you think we're going to go? I think this team has the potential to go to the Final Four. I'm not just saying that as a biased alum, mm -hmm. as someone who loves the coach and loves this team. That's what Seth Davis is saying. That's what all these people whose full-time job is to watch college basketball. Not just you and I, not just Missouri Valley Conference, but all these games. And they think we have the tools to win many games in the NCAA tournament and to make the Final Four. Now, a key to that, is we have to bring our best effort every single game. We have to make shots. In the yeah. first half of that championship game that's on CBS this past Sunday, everyone's watching. We couldn't hit the broad side of the barn. We were like three of 30 in the first half. Right. That's not gonna get you to the final four. Right. But in the second half, we go on a 24 to four run. That's the type of team, if they show up and everyone's getting involved, everyone's contributing like they have been, we got good bench play, that team has the potential to go very far and to make this special year even more magical. I totally agree. Uh, I think that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Eric. You've been excellent. Thank Be you. sure to tune in to Panther Sports Nation and watch our boys basketball uh, kick butt. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, last week, our own Samantha Caster took a look at the basics of roller derby. This week, we bring a more personal side of this obscure sport. Last time we looked at roller derby and some of the basics of the sport. Now let's get to know some of the players and their stories. My real name is Tracy Lake and my derby name is After School Special. I'm a teacher by day, so when I was trying to decide on a name, I had no clue where to even start. So I asked my colleagues for some advice, gave them an offer of a free ticket if somebody came up with my name, and somebody came up with it, so I gave them a free ticket to come and watch. Uh, my sister actually played roller derby in Dubuque, and I went to watch her first bout, and they were playing my team. So I went home and checked them out just because I was curious and uh, within two weeks I was buying gear and within another two weeks I was trying out and four and a half years later, here I am. Um, try something new. That's what I had to tell myself when I started Derby, is to tr just try something new. I've watched it once before, I had heard a little bit about it, and I just thought it was gonna be this rough and tumble kind of thing, and it's so not that. And it has this um, past stereotype that it's like a stage wrestling almost, um, but it's definitely not that either. We are a serious athletic, competing team and that's just kind of the stereotype that we try to get past is we practice, we strategize, um, we watch game footage to prepare ourselves and we're hoping that people start to take us a little more seriously like an actual competitive sport. Angie Caster is another player I got a chance to speak to. She started a roller derby team in Cairo, Egypt, being the first team in that country. I asked Angie what the derby means to her. She says, derby means empowerment in a community to me. I love the diversity. I grew up playing the sport with some similar age groups and mindness, but in derby, I'm competing against 
18 to 40 year olds. From stay at home moms to tattoo artists to environmental scientists to judges. I realize it's not just a sport. It's a lifestyle changing, community building, comfort zone kicking experience. Um, what's really cool about roller derby is it brings together all of these women that normally would probably never cross paths and some of my best friends are my teammates now and they're people I probably never would have interacted with on the street because we're so different um, and roller derby that brings us all together and we start to find that we actually have so many things in common. Derby is not just a sport, it's a lifestyle. Um, there's women that are moms, they're single, we're all over the spectrum. I mean, it's just cool that it brings all of these different females together that all have strong personalities usually. <laughs> um, but we make it work so well. And it's, it's one of the best experiences ever. I, I love it. <laughs> Be sure to check out the Push Up Brothers at their next bout. This has been Samantha Castor reporting for The Prowl. That takes a really personal look at a very physical sport that many people don't know a lot about. Sticking with the physical sport theme, Ian sat down with The Prowl's own Mike Leib to talk about the UNI Men's Club hockey team. The UNI Hockey Club was formed in the fall of 2013. Uh, a bunch of group of guys got together and decided that we needed a team here on campus. Um, got a bunch of guys that just love playing hockey, that grew up playing hockey, or that were at least interested in the sport. Um, just kind of formed everything together, funded out of our own pockets, got together, practiced, set up a bunch of games, and it really just kind of took off from there. Um, this year we expanded, we really made an effort to uh, go bigger and better and um, play against more teams. So yeah, we went around to other schools in the area, um, in the Midwest, that had club teams um, such as Iowa State, Creighton, South Dakota State, um, teams that just really had an open spot in the schedule and that wanted to play. And um, we just emailed them early, got acquainted with them, and either we'd go down there and they'd pay for our ice time, and, uh, or they'd come here and pay for the ice time, and they'd play games. Yeah, this year we have a really young team, um, a lot of talent, guys that have really made an impact. And um, we are playing a lot of tougher teams this year, um, tough competition. Hockey is a tough sport, it's fun, it's, um, it's a lot of hard work and motivation, and um, it really takes a mental and physical um, toll on it. It's, it's yeah, really good for um, We practice twice a week, we have one on ice practice and one dry land practice where we Conditioning, footwork, agility, and uh, strength. So, kept busy over the season and we got a lot of work. Uh, yeah, the UNI hockey team um, actually has um, people from all skill levels. We've got guys that have been skating since they learned how to walk. Um, we've got guys that just started playing last year. So the skill level really varies and um, we try to make an effort to include everybody because we want people to have fun with the game. Enjoy the sport. Again, I think that a lot of people at you and I don't know that we have a team yet. And so, what we really focused on this last season was building that awareness, trying to get people to come out to the games and support you and I Panthers, and um, just try to establish you and I as a school for club hockey. We just finished up our season against South Dakota State last weekend. Um, our record ended up being at six four and one, which pretty good, um, stayed positive, and uh, yeah, we just had a, we had an exciting season, a lot of close games, um, a lot of fun and exciting games, and um, it's an experience that I wouldn't take back for anything. And then next season, we're looking at getting even more players, building even more awareness for the UNI students, and just do what we do the best, and that's have fun. Right. Yeah, there's nothing like being on the ice and looking up and seeing a lot of fans in the audience, so it really does make a difference, so come out to the games at Young Arena and support the Panther hockey team. Um, you can support the hockey team by finding us on Facebook, we have a Twitter account, and we have a website, um, that's UNI Panthers Hockey. 
Welcome to the Roundtable. I'm Sean Dangler, and I'm here with uh, Tyler and Riley. And today we're talking about whether uh, you know alcohol should be allowed at U and I events or collegiate uh, events across the nation. So, what do you guys think? And what are you guys' opinions? Well, let me put this in perspective. There are 120 colleges, and 21 of those actually do serve alcohol. Um, pun intended, 21. But only 11 are on campus. So, um, yeah, I think it's really up to the state legislature and the Board of Regents to decide. But it's interesting how things are going to turn out later on. One thing I noticed when I was researching was um, a lot of it is conferences. It's not really, mm -hmm. you know, the NCA or whatever, it's just conferences. I know um, the SEC is the conference that probably most of the schools are part of that was experimenting with that. But, um, yeah, we're in the Missouri Valley Conference, and I'm just, that's the rule in our conference and that's the rule in the big 10 too yeah so um but yeah there's no s iowa state iowa between us three the big three i guess no one sells alcohol at sporting events but we do have ads of alcohol but they are limited though yeah well because if in the unidome it's not just for football or whatever i mean they have concerts there too and they have yep. sponsored deals so you can't really just like shove those to the side but that kind of brings up our point, like, if you're already sponsored, if you're already getting sponsored and you're already using that, um, why don't you just sell it to make revenue versus not? I yeah, I, I mean, I think the biggest deal for a school like you and I, especially for us, since we use sort of state funding and, uh, and we try to wean ourselves off that, we're trying to maximize a revenue stream. And by selling alcohol, that will allow us to create more revenue for our programs, and then we're not just using like the state funds for uh, to support our athletic programs. Um, revenue is a a big thing. You know, two dollars out of every five dollars of beer sold for Troy, they pocket that two dollars. Um, but another question, a good question, is about the tailgating. I mean. <laughs> Does it help or hurt tailgating parties outside of the game? Mm. Here's my perspective on everything. When it comes to like the actual, you know, the problems of why they don't sell alcohol. Um, if kids, people who are 21 over are gonna come to the game and buy alcohol, they're gonna stay longer regardless of whether um, the team's losing. You know, sometimes there's a game and the team is down by a bunch at halftime and people leave so if you have alcohol there people will probably stay yeah I think the most important thing is students I know a lot of students that they might just go tailgating and then they don't want to go to the game because there's no alcohol there they can drink so they just go home and nap and reboot for the night mm -hmm. and having that jaw of alcohol there will bring in more students and you and I we all know suffers with their student attendance at uh, football games because people they're just not as interested but alcohol at least will interest at least a few more students I believe yeah well alcohol is the reason why um, I mean tailgating parties fans kept going in and out and re-entering the sporting events that's why they actually had um, these 11 schools to have alcohol in them but they are limited though with wristbands fans are limited to three total beers and sales are restricted later in the game so well and I think um, another problem or a benefit, I guess you could see, is um, with the amount of minors drinking alcohol, if all the um, older students who are of age and uh, adults going to the game, they might not have access to alcohol as easily as um, they do now because you can't bring it anywhere, so everyone's outside tailgating anyways. Yeah. So it would, definitely, it would definitely bring attendance up across the board, regardless of school, I would believe. Yeah, I, I think, especially for you and I, if we're the first ones to enact the rule of letting out alcohol come in, it definitely differentiate us from other universities. And I, I believe it would impact some, maybe some students. It would, it'd be a plus for some students to know they could buy alcohol at a sporting event so they could enjoy, enjoy it more, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think it's just important for us because even though people get rowdy and that alcohol can do that causes people i think the benefits of you and i having the alcohol in there being sold creating revenue for our university is more important than not selling it well and i think what you and i has that helps them is that we have a dome and um it's not outside i mean obviously it's still but i mean i feel like you can control it easier when it's inside versus a stadium where some of those doors of the stadium it's 
almost like you can go in and out really easily. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, any last thoughts here before we close this out? Yes, there are minors and parents who probably disagree. Um, but again, some of these schools are tightly controlled with wristbands and a limited of two beers or three beers. So it will be interesting how this plays out in the future. Yeah. All right. So that's the round table uh, for Sean and Tyler and Riley. And now uh, for Arch Madness, 2015 was one of the best performances by a UNI basketball team in our school's history. What you may not know about the tournament is the tournament before the tournament. Austin Hansen gives us an inside look at the team behind the team in Manager Madness 2015. Uh, it's just a time when the managers from the NBC can get together and have some fun, get to play a little basketball, see who's got game. I mean, it's fun getting out here, playing against other guys. We play against each other all the time during practice. Last year it was pretty competitive, but this year, I mean, we got I've got a couple of guys getting really into it. I mean, it's, it's fun to see, seeing people uh, taking it so seriously. I mean, everybody's taking it seriously, but uh, I, I think it's a little bit more competitive this year. It's, it's kind of fun to play in a big arena, like you get, you get the big feel, feel with it. We're really grateful that we're able to play in here. Just coming down to St. Louis is just a fun time for all of us. Just get, a, uh, you know, get off school, play some basketball, hang out with the team. It's just a really fun atmosphere and a good environment. I think it's sweet to see, see managers getting a little bit of attention by you know, Sports Illustrated. Uh, USA Today contacted us a little earlier in the year too, gave, gave uh, Grant an interview. Getting shout outs from Jay Billis. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Wow. Usually we just go under the radar doing some of the behind the scenes stuff, you know, that uh, help out the coaches and the players with everyday stuff. And uh, it's it's cool to get our name out there, the manager video we released, showing it at the Wichita games, seeing you know, all the students love it and laughing at it. I mean, that's kind of what we wanted, that's the reaction we wanted from it. So it's good to get our name out there and show people that, you know, we do a lot of stuff too. Regarding the NBC tournament, I'd just say, you know, just being in St. Louis, it's just a really fun atmosphere. You get all, all 10 teams to come down and, uh, you know, there's always a lot of fans. And so it's just, it's really cool just hoping that the team can do well this year. I mean, just, just interacting with everybody in, a, in kind of a different setting is a lot of fun. Awesome package, Austin. Our managers finished third at the tournament. Well, that's all for today's show. As always, look for us on social media. For The Prowl, I'm Ian Shilhanik. Booyah! And I'm Andy McConnell. Have a great spring break and watch March Madness.